Okay, good evening one and all. Okay, today we will be talking about the substitution effect and the income effect. Let us start by defining these two properties first. Every time there is a change in price, okay, what we expect to see from the individual is a total effect. And this total effect is made up of two effects, okay, which we should know by now. Okay, it is the substitution effect as well as the income effect. Okay, the substitution effect is the individual's response to the change in price due to his preferences. So when we talk about preferences, we should immediately think about the indifference curve. Okay, in term, this is utility. And the substitution effect will always have a negative relationship to the change in price, which means that if the price has gone up, okay, the substitution effect would be a negative one. If the price has gone down, the substitution effect would be a positive one. Now, as for income, okay, the income effect is the individual's reaction okay, in terms of whether he sees the good a normal or an inferior good. So, when the customer has a rise in his real income, okay, how he reacts to that will depend on whether it's a normal or inferior good. So, by looking at the income effect, we can identify what is the type of good that we are looking at. Okay, now let's go on to drawing the graph proper. Okay, we shall now be using the Hickson definition of real income, which is in terms of utility. Okay, I'll be going through step by step on how to draw this graph, as well as the denotifications of the notions of um, the x and y axis. So this is good x, okay, assuming it's Nike shoes. Okay, and this is y, assuming that it's Adidas pants, for example. Okay, and we have our budget constraint, and we should be aware that this point over here is real income in terms of good X, which is your monetary income, the okay, nominal income divided by the price of X. And this is your real income in terms of Y. And now we have our indifference curve. The, the the individual is now initially at point A. So now let's look at what will happen when there is a decrease in the price of X. Okay, this would swing our budget line outwards, and is further out because in terms of real income, okay, the individual has benefited, okay, for X. Okay, now let's look at let's identify the substitution effect first. Now, this is point A over here, that's our initial. Okay, the first step will be to draw okay, a, dot, a, a par parallel line which is tangent to the indifference curve. Okay, and we will label this point C. Okay, you may be asking where is B? Alright, A to B would give us the total effect. A to C will give us the substitution effect. Okay, after what we do after this, what we do is we draw vertical lines. Okay. Our initial choice will be XO. He lands at X1 because of the income effect. Uh sorry, the substitution effect. Okay, so as you can see, it is a negative relationship for the substitution effect and price. Price has gone down, it's a negative change, the substitution effect has increased, a positive change. Now we look at the income effect. Well, remember earlier we said that income effect will help us to determine whether a good is a normal or inferior good. So therefore, at the vertical line above point C, we're going to draw two arrows. Now, how do we determine whether the individual's real income has increased? Always look at the, the imaginary budget line, okay? Whether it lies to the left side or the right side of the new budget line. As we can see, the imaginary budget line is on the left side, which means okay, that he's able to go outwards Right? And that means that his real income has increased. So, understanding the law of normal goods, if my real income has increased, I'll be going this way. That means I'll be buying more X. X is normal good. If I end up going this way, X is an inferior good. Why? Because my real income is increasing, but I'm buying less. Okay, so therefore we can have two possibilities. In fact, three. Okay, point B can be either here, 
we are confident that it is a normal good because we're going this way okay and point B can also be here where it is an inferior good and if it exceeds the substitution effect over here it will be a given good now can the new point B lie here no definitely not why because it will divide the law okay that indifference curves cannot intersect okay it is impossible for the new point B to be here this is completely wrong okay so now we can conclude okay that when we are looking at a normal good the substitution effect and the income effect moves in the same direction okay that means if the price drops okay we know that as an indirect relationship to the substitution effect the substitution effect will be moving to the right side we can expect the in the income effect to be moving to the right side whereas for the inferior good it will be a different different case okay substitution effect will move in one direction and the income effect will move in another okay that is very clear that is an inferior good however in the case of a given good okay your income effect will be larger than your substitution effect okay uh, i have come to the end of uh, today's video on on uh, the income effect and the substitution effect okay um We'll be looking at income in time for the next video um, and you will realize how to use uh, the income in kind in when we do questions uh, question one. Question one in the exam paper is uh, there will be made out a few parts and some of them actually require us to use income in kind and the question doesn't state so. So in the next video we'll be learning that. Um, thank you for watching. I wish you all the best in your studies.